Yeah, right away. Um, you play this game long enough and you've had enough sprained ankles and injuries that you know when something's wrong right away. So immediately I knew I uh, went right back to the locker room and it ended up being the best, uh, best decision. Were you injured at all in college? No, I mean, I, I had a, um, a similar injury to this actually like uh, right in the middle of my freshman year. Um, but but thankfully, I mean, I've been off the, in, off the you know injury list for Yeah, well, it's not going to last forever, right? Um, and in the grand scheme of things, you know, however long it takes, a sprained ankle isn't the end of the world, right? So um, it's been tough the last couple of days. You know, getting out of bed and moving around has been difficult. But, um, you know, I know I'll be back sooner rather than later. And thankfully, I'm not missing, you know, important games down the stretch. You know, the preseason is important. Um, but if I were to choose a time to get so Looking back at your college stats, it seemed like maybe you only missed two or three games with that last injury. When's the last time you missed uh, the amount of games you could miss this time? Then. I mean, yeah. well, you, you, you're probably going to be out longer than two or three games this right. time, right? Would, it, would you have to go back to high school where you had an injury? Yeah, 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 yeah. So high school, uh, I broke my foot my senior year. Um, I was out for like half the season. So um, that was probably the longest stretch of games that I've missed. So I've, all in all, I've been really, really lucky. And, um, you know, it sucks to get hurt like this, but I'm really thankful for the help that I've had for it. So, you came down from age foot. Yeah. So, went up to take a layup. I uh, was jumping off my left foot, and as soon as I planted to go jump, it like rolled over on me. Maybe help get your spirits up and get support, and advice, and wisdom. Yeah. I mean, thankfully, I have a great camp and a lot of great team and a lot of people that I've, I'm really close with played basketball. Right? My parents played basketball, my fiance played basketball, um, you know, agents, other coaches, other teammates from college and, and here everyone knows what it's like to be injured and have been in my shoes before and so while it might seem like a huge deal for me and that um, things feel like they're, you know, shaky, um, everyone around me is able to calm me down and uh, let me know that, it, you know, big picture grand scheme, it's it's just a small, small uh, bump in the road. When did you get engaged? I got engaged about two weeks before I got here. So end of uh, summer, yeah. Thanks. Right. Thanks. Can you watch the game? Which one? Number nine. Say again? The game with number nine and Scoot Henderson. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I watched... Uh, I watched like the first half pretty close. and the second half, I was kind of in and out. Thing. I mean, kids are talented, man. Especially uh, Wemba Miana. Um, I mean, just the physical the physical set he has alone is incredible. Um, and what he can do with that frame is, is special. So, um, you know, obviously he's a highly touted prospect for a reason, and we expect really big things out of him. Kuzma has said a few times that he feels like you've made uh, some noticeable steps in this training camp. How do you feel like you've improved year over year? Oh, I mean, it's it's kind of I mean, it's kind of what I've done ever since you know being in college. Every summer, um, made really big steps and really big strides. Um, I feel like my consistency and my confidence is higher than it's ever been. Um, last year, I had a lot of kind of internal up and down moments. Um, and this year, I feel like the, st the ship's a lot more steady. Um, I'm much more of a weapon off the bounce. Um, finishing at the rim, uh, ball security, things like that. Uh, I've taken a huge step too. And as I feel, I just feel generally more comfortable, right? Like I just, I know everybody's name in here. Um, I know exactly where to go. Um, I know how long it takes to get places. I know my role on this team. Um, everybody believes in me. And, um, that level of comfort mentally uh, does volumes for players. Anybody here will tell you that. Early in your rookie season, you were pressed into duty to play meaningful minutes. What advice would you give to Johnny in the face of the same uh, opportunity? Yeah, let it fly. Um, you know you know how to play this game. You know how to play it well. That's why you're here. Um, and these players that you're playing against, like, yeah, they're good, but you can hang with every single one of them. So. Um, he's got nothing to worry about, nothing to fear. Um, and, you know, nerves and butterflies are good. Um, you got to use that to your advantage.
Is this a, a conventional ankle sprain or is it a high ankle sprain? Yeah, it's pretty conventional. Um, I mean, it's it's more serious and severe than a tweak. You know, it's not just a tweak, but um, it's not a high ankle sprain. It's kind of a conventional deal. It's gonna take me a little while to get back from. You were in the boot yesterday. I'm curious, is that the plan to stay in the boot for a little while? Um, I mean, I'm gonna try to get out of the boot as quick as I can. Um, I gotta be able to walk with the normal gait and pretty much pain-free in order to get out of it. Um, so, I mean, I'm really hoping to get out of it as soon as I can. Um, it's more of a protection thing than anything, but, um, you know, I, I don't like not being mobile. So, uh, as soon as I can get out of the boot, uh, you can see the two shoes on. What, what, was what the, can you do uh, in the meantime? Can you shoot out of the chair or anything like that? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I could. I mean, now, now I'm kind of at the spot where, you know, maybe shoot a free throw or um, things like that, but it's, it's mainly... Like I'm, I'm less worried about maintaining my shot and maintaining my um, touch and more worried about just getting the ankle healed. So I'm not worried about the touch, it's not gonna go away. Um, so I get this thing right as soon as possible. What was the process like trying to get treatment up in the air? Oh, that was tough. Yeah, that was <laughs> tough. Yeah, that was that was honestly one of the first things that went through my head was like, we got 12 hours in the air like with this. And so I had like, uh, all sorts of treatment devices kind of laying out in the aisle and I felt bad for the flight attendants having to step around that, but um, they were really gracious in our stead. So um, we were able to, there's nothing you can really do to like make your ankle better in the air like that, um, but we kept it at a place where it didn't get, it didn't get too bad. Hey, Corey, uh, please. Take me back to that first NBA Japan game from your performance, what were some of your takeaways? Yeah, I mean, well, it just felt great to play against another team again, right? And, I mean, the score was reflective of how rusty both teams were, you know? Um, guys were trying to find their touch. We were playing at, you know, 3 a.m. in D.C., so time zones were out of whack and jet lag was an issue, but uh, more than anything, like, it was great to see the potential this team could have, um, our chemistry together, and it just felt good to kind of get up and down. Um, that's kind of what we took from it. There's a sequence there in that first game where someone drove on you and you stood with you stuffed them basically. You, what was the takeaway that you had from that sequence in terms of how your off-season work translated to a Yeah, it's going. It went according to plan. Um, got exactly what I wanted to get done done, and um, you know that was a big goal of mine. And uh, to be able to get tested like that and uh, right off the rip was really good for me and um, I feel like you know in, in that being my first game it's only gonna get better and better and I'm gonna get um, you know better with the progress I've made this time. How would you grade the dinner that Ruby organized? Oh it was, it was like a high nine to a ten like it was I mean like the service was incredible the food was great it was like a family style everyone was sharing stuff that's the way I like to eat um, and yeah, it was it was awesome. I'm really happy you did that for us. Um, it was nice fun, and you know, I, I really that was that was one of the highlights of the trip for sure. Wes mentioned that obviously if you can't participate in drills, you can still observe and try and you know sponge it up as much as you can. Obviously, it's not the same thing as being in there, but how helpful is that still to just be around the team and get to know the guys? Oh, it's the best. Like yeah, it's it's the best, man. Like I can, I can only take mental reps right now, um, so doing that as much as possible is huge for me. Um, whenever coach is teaching and um, I have an opportunity to be, to be out on the floor, like I'm gonna do that. So um, I hope to be, you know, hope to be really mentally sharp when I come back just from all of the stuff I've seen and the things that I can, like you said, sponge up and done uh, all out. Have you been dealing, you've been dealing with before or just flared up recently or? Just flared up recently. There's nothing to be concerned about still. Johnny West has talked a lot about how he kind of put you in uncomfortable situations in those games with him, just having to bring the ball up and play point guard and everything. How was that for you? Yeah, uh, I'm glad he did it in preseason and not in the regular season, so I can just get a feel for it. But, um, you know, that's that's what the game of basketball is, just, you know, you, know, you got to be ready to get put in any position. So I thought it was really good for me to try to get comfortable being uncomfortable. You're uh, going through your first NBA training camp and you're a first time father at the same time. I mean, that seems like a lot. How have you been managing <laughs> yeah. it? Uh, is there anything you've been doing in particular? 
Uh, nothing in particular, you know, just, you know, taking it one day at a time, uh, one diaper at a time, you know. But, <laughs> nah, uh, it all came at me pretty fast, but, um, you know, it's also very exciting and, you know, really good for me, too, to be able to mature. Mm -hmm. Hey, John, what were some of your takeaways from uh, the NBA Japan games and those two games? Yeah, uh, you know, playing the defending champs and an experienced team like the Warriors, you get to see um, what makes them so good and, you know, what makes them a really, you know, well-bonded team. Um, and I thought, you know, there's a lot of good and bad takeaways from it. What's it been like guarding Brad in practice? I would imagine you're defending him. Uh, yeah, any anytime, uh, you know, I have to pick a matchup, I'll try to pick him because obviously, you know, he's one of the better, if not the best player on the team. So um, it's just going to make me better and make him better, you know, pushing each other. Anything that, uh, you know, maybe you didn't see on film that you, when you experienced it firsthand, you're like, wow, this is difficult to... to defend uh basically you know he's just hard to defend i mean you know i've seen it on tv seen it in video games but um you know being able to stand in front of him and guard him one-on-one -on -one in real life is it's crazy but you know, you know it's got to treat him just like he's any other basketball player you know i can't treat him like he's, he's a god or something you know it's just coming on and playing basketball is it is it particularly tiring him <laughs> tiring guarding him since he, he runs so much uh, no, nah, not really. I mean, you know, the team made sure that we're all in shape. So, mm -hmm. but like I said before, he is definitely very difficult to guard. What was it like to have your first NBA road trip aside from summer league to go all the way out to Japan? Uh, well, it was good for me to just get out of the country since I've never been to Japan. But um, I thought it went really well. And, you know, just the bus rides, the plane ride, being able to talk to teammates and, you know, get more familiar with them and build that chemistry. In terms of the speed of the game, in terms of the physicality of the game, what are you seeing in terms of the differences between summer league, college ball, to now? Um, well, guys are definitely a lot, you know, faster and stronger. But I would say, you know, the pace is just a little bit slower too. Guys are more in control and you know know what they're doing more rather than in college. I know you have the knee issue now, but have you felt more mobile in these games than you did in summer league when you were dealing with the back tightness? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, that back issue bothered me basically all of summer league, and, you know, it's a lot better now. That unfortunately, Corey is hurt, and the team may need to call on you to, to play important minutes early in the season. Yeah, uh, it's very unfortunate what happened to Corey. Uh, he's a really, really great player, but an even better person. But you know, I feel like that's why the team has guys like me or you know guys on the bench to be able to step up. So it's just that next man up mentality. Johnny, have you had the chance to kind of pick your vet yet? Anybody you really bonded with? Um, no, not yet. Uh, I would days. say I'm pretty cool with all the guys, but if I had to pick one in particular, I would say probably you know Monte Will or Brad. They're usually the guys who are in my ear the most during games. What was one thing about playing point guard that um, stood out to you as difficult or something that you would have to kind of get up to speed to play it in a regular season game? Um, I would probably say just being more vocal, you know, calling plays, telling guys where they need to be at, and also just knowing the plays as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't filter right now. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle, too. A couple months ago, we had a situation where we met in uh, front of the locker room in Orlando when the Wizards played Orlando Magic and I uh, had a chance to talk to Tommy Shepard. I had a, ch a chance to talk to uh, Coach Wes and and obviously, you know, uh, for me it was just to see the guys, talk to Brad, say hello to Brad and uh, say hello to a couple of European guys. But uh, Tommy said that, hey, uh, if, you, if you have time, we'd love to have you on, uh, you know, in, in D.C. and you could drop some knowledge to the to the kids in our team. Uh, Coach West said, "Yeah, definitely, that would be wonderful." And, uh, and that was the moment when click something clicked in my head, and I said, "You know what? I think I might use that chance, and uh, I want I want to try." So I made a phone call about a month month and a half ago uh, to Tommy. I spoke with him. My agent talked to him also, and I said, "Listen, let's try the first two weeks and see how things working, and and then we're gonna go from there." So you don't know how long you're staying? Uh, I'm gonna yeah. stay here, stay here till 15th, uh, which is uh, until uh, right after the last game, preseason game. I'm gonna go back home. Uh, 
And uh, like I said, let's let's see how those two, two weeks gonna go. Uh, you know, there's a few different things I gotta look at. First of all, I'm not a single man anymore. I have a family, I have a wife, I gotta, you know, it's not only about me, it's about me and my family. Uh, two, I'm 40 years old. <laughs> it's not like I'm 21 years old. My body feels every practice. Uh, we have a lot of young cats in the team that like to go at me, so, and like to go at them too. And that drains a lot of energy from my body. So, you know, I, I gotta see how I'm gonna feel after two weeks, you know. And uh, at the same time, I don't, I, I don't wanna step on anybody's toe. I know coaches, they have their own routine, they have their schedules, they have their connection with the players. So I really wanna kind of like fit in, help out, but don't, 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 don't disturb anything in the team. You know, definitely a huge shout out and uh, thank you to the uh, Washington Wizards organization for bringing me here. I feel great. The, the team, management, coaches, players, staff members, even media members, they welcome me super warm. I'm, I'm just really honored right now. What's it like having a screen named after you? Uh, you know what? Uh, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. If you ask me uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago that eventually my screens will be one of the best screens in the world, I'll say, <laughs> you've got to change your drugs, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, great feeling, uh, great feeling. Um, I'm not going to lie, I had a couple phone calls from different teams about going into, a, you know, different practices and different uh, training camps to try to obviously explain the screening and stuff like that. But it's not that easy. It's not only one practice, you gotta, you got to work with the players. Uh, it has to also come with experience. It also ha has to come with certain physicality. And you need, you need to do many, many, many reps in order to become a great screener. How did you come up with the Gortat screen? And when you started doing it, did you realize that it was kind of an innovation in basketball? Uh, you know what? Uh, first of all, I have to give, give props to Stan Van Gundy who taught me how to set uh, correctly screens, but uh, talking about the angle, talking about the right angle. He, he was the first person to explain me how to set screens. Uh, Brandon Malone, uh, Michael's Malone, uh, father, uh, he told me, uh, an ex-coach from Detroit Pistons, uh, uh, championship coach, he obviously was consistently pushing me into setting good screens. Uh, I watch a lot of tapes on Team Duncan, Kedrick Perkins, um, KG. They were great screeners. Uh, and, I, and then during my career, I tried to develop different things. And it only, it only came from my basketball IQ. I was watching during the game how they cover Brett and John, how they basically disrespect me by leaving me open outside the paint. And I said, that, hey, listen, I gotta come up with something better to be more effective. And that's how I sacrifice kind of my numbers in order to create clear path for John and Brad. And I know for a fact, they freaking love it. <laughs> <laughs> they freaking love that. Marsh, how's it been working with, uh, with Daniel Gafford? What stands out about him? Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I'm gonna lie, it's kind of different uh, being here, sitting and watching him, you know, do different things than watching him in the game or watching highlights. He's definitely more skilled than we think he is. He's, he has incredible touch around the rim. He got a left and right hand, super athletic. First of all, very good kid, very smart kid. I think he has a big heart. We just gotta continue to push him. We have to set him on the right path. What I mean by that, he got to be here early, work hard, don't get distracted, don't get mad about missed shots. You got to continue to work hard, believe in everything he does, and things will happen. Things will happen. Things will finally start coming for him. And I know he's in a situation, he got Kristaps here. You know, he's a extremely great player but there is a place for him to play in this team. He can help this team. He just got to do it and he got to be confident, patient, and everything will come. Mark, so there, it, it, it took, you had to fight to get into, this, into the league. Are there, are there 
elements of your story and how you got here and stuck here that Daniel can learn from? I think there's a lot of things he could learn. Uh, and I'm going to tell you from the experience. Uh, I personally was 57 pick in the league. For the people that don't know, there's only two players in the history of, of the game that survived with a 57 pick. It's me and Manu Ginobili. I wasn't <laughs> as gifted as Manu. I don't have championship, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, but I did survive as a 57 pick in this league. I was fortunate enough to play with one, with definitely with the best big men in, in the history of this league. I've been coached by Patrick Ewing, Ralph Sampson and Phoenix Suns, Kenny, uh, Kenny Gaddison, uh, Brandon Malone, obviously he's not a big, but great coach. Uh, Brandon Malone, uh, during summer uh, off season, I worked with uh, Hakim Olajuwon. So I think I know a few things about post moves and about things around the basket. And I told, Danny, uh, I told DG, uh, Daniel Gafford, and a couple other bigs to kind of be patient. Not everything's going to happen in one practice or in one week. On top of that, I would like to circle to the situation that's happening in Europe right now. Uh, might be deep, deep stuff what I'm going to say, but you got to understand, man, you're in, a, you're in an unbelievable position to, to do what you do. You play basketball. I don't have to remind everybody else what's going on in Ukraine right now. People are dying over there. Families are losing homes and everything. If you come in here and you complain about low pain, or about missed shots, or, or your touches, man, you got issues. You gotta understand, this is the best job you ever had, man. You gotta come here and do your work. That's the only thing you gotta do. If somebody asks you to come here at seven, you gotta be here 6.30. And you do that, Life's gonna be beautiful. Besides Gaff, who else have you been kind of working close with? Uh, I work mainly with Bakes. Uh, Makur uh, showed me a lot of uh, potential too. He definitely gotta put some weight. You gotta eat a lot. You gotta, listen, you gotta eat a lot. Obviously, I'm cracking jokes about the, about him and it, you know all the time, left and right. But he understands. I love him as a brother. He just gotta he just gotta get bigger. I love that he can shoot threes, but I want him to give me little touches around the rim. I want him to have left and right hook. I want him to be uh, uh, I want him to, to I want him to feel comfortable around the rim to make one or two post moves. He's uh you know he's not a five, he's a four. There's gonna be a lot of switching. I want him to to be able to go to the post and give me a post move, one or two moves. Um, you know, he, he looks skinny but he actually plays like he's a giant. I, I ain't gonna lie, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I lost one-on-one -on -one today to him. So <laughs> I'm kind of upset about that. But um, uh, I work with Javier. Uh, he's not fully 100% yet. He, he has some issue with the body, but uh, he has also potential. I like him, good kid. He asks a lot of questions. Uh, and that, 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 means, no, that means he wants to learn and it's good. Uh, so that's that's what I see. That's what I see. I was like that, you know. When Patrick Patrick Ewing was like Jesus Christ, Gortat, stop, you know. I, I I had I had million questions every day for him, you know. But I just want to learn, and I love what these guys are doing, and uh, we just gotta continue every day. It's a hustle for the next 10, 15 years. They gotta do it every freaking day, and after that, you and your family is gonna have a beautiful life. If in 2005, the year you got drafted, someone came up to you and said, hey, you're going to spend 10 plus years in the NBA, would you have believed that person? I would say again, you got to change your drugs. <laughs> but no, but seriously, no. Uh, listen, I, I honestly, I didn't even think about that. I was just, I was just in the, in the, in, in my mind, I was just so excited just to be in the league. I was living each day like it's my last day on earth you know like it's my last day on this planet i was going left when coaches were telling me hey do 10 reps i was doing 12 reps when coaches were telling me take 15 jumpers i was taking 20 jumpers because i wanted to when dwight knocked me in the mouth and he cracked three teeth in one possession i said you know what i'm going i got 20 couple more teeth come on man let's go <laughs> you know as you guys see i got all the scratches on me I said, why? I don't care. You don't cut your nails. I will continue. I'm still standing. Trust me. I was doing things that a lot of people will 
will stop doing after a couple days or weeks and I kind of survive. I'm glad, I'm happy. I got a great story to tell now. What have you thought about Brad's growth as a player and a person? Uh, I think he's extremely great. I'm super excited for him. Not, uh, I'm not only, I'm, I'm watching him as a, not only basketball player, I'm also seeing him as a incredible human being. He became a father, he created an incredible family, and that's what is the most important. Knowing the temptation in this league and situations in this league to create a wonderful, lovely, loving family, it's also a challenge, and he did that. So I also believe that family helped him to become a better player. I think he had, uh, last year he had a little bad luck, the injury, unfortunately, the injury. Uh, but I'm quite, I'm 100% I'm sure he's gonna come back stronger now. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him in top three, score, the best scoring guys in the league. And also what I, will, what I want him to see is to become even more bigger and vocal leader because there's always room to improve. And we talk about this with Brad, we talk about this with, you know, coaches. Uh, he can always be better and he will be better because that's incredible human. He's an incredible human and player. You got to spend some time with some of the other Wizards alumni today. What was that like and what's it like being a part of the larger 25th anniversary celebration? Oh, man, it's great. I see the facility for the second day in a row. Uh, we didn't have that back in the day, man. We didn't have that. Uh, people from the restaurant are looking at us through the windows uh, when we were practicing. Uh, you know, we had only one court. Thank God I was a veteran. Otherwise, I would be shooting on the side baskets. So these kids got everything now. These kids got everything now. They have, we have three physio, they have 12 physios. You know, um, we had five coaches, they got 20 coaches now. They got everything they need. What they got to do is be here and work their ass off. That's the only thing they have to do. Uh, I'm happy for Washington. I'm happy for, uh, for the owner, Ted Leonis, that, you know, he's creating uh, a bigger opportunities for the players. I know for a fact that he's an unbelievable owner. He mentioned to us many times that, hey, if you guys want to go back to school in your off season, and you want to get a master's, you want to get a degree, I'll pay for it. I mean, listen, what owner does that? That's the owner. Uh, you want to play for the owner like that. I know that back in the day when um, my mom had a stroke many years ago and I cut my streak, 400, well, uh, 280 something games in a row streak, I had to go back to Poland. Ted Leonis ran on the middle of the warm up uh, right before the game. He ran on the court. Like I had a feeling like I did something wrong. And he ran to me, he grabbed me, said, listen, family first. If you have to go home, don't worry about it. We will cover up for you. We've got other guys to step in. I want you to go home, take care of your mom. I mean, that means a lot. When the owner does that, that means a lot. So uh, I'm happy that I'm, I can be here. Uh, 25 years for the Wizards. Love it. I mean, hopefully another 25 years and a couple championships. With Brett as a leader and me as a maybe assistant coach. <laughs> we'll see if my body holds up. Hey, Mark, so not... Thank you. One more. Um, now that you're back, what are good memories, good feelings came back? Only good feelings. Uh, you know, obviously, I know the narratives over there that uh, I know the narratives that, you know, me and John hit argument. It's over. We, we forgetting about this. We are grown men now. We even older grown men now. And we have to forget about this. I'm rooting for John. Uh, I want him to be successful in, in, in L.A. Uh, we've been in touch for the for the past year or year and a half. Uh, texting each other and I only have a great memories here. Mm -hmm. We had incredible battles in playoffs, in regular season. We have incredible stories in the locker room. We've talked to uh, even there sitting and eating food, you know, with Brad and other guys that have been here, you know, six, seven, eight years ago. Man, you got goosebumps when you're talking about that. It's awesome, man. I hope this team will become a team that's going to make a run in playoffs and eventually one day they're going to be contender because this is something you can talk about for another century.